Hey guys. So I just got my house clean today, earlier in the morning. Milo has been enjoying the clean floors. All right, so here is my storage bedroom. I decided to move Riley into this room because I wanted her to have another level of independence instead of always sleeping in the same room as me. And I wanted to see if it would help her with some of the behaviors she was demonstrating when I first used this crate with her. But I would say that problem was more so the change of crate rather than the bedroom thing. Although, who knows, because it's very well possible that that added another level of attachment. I have all these Home Depot boxes. I think I have one more in my closet, like on this side. But basically, I've already started putting a bunch of my belongings in these boxes. That way, when it's time for moving, I just have the movers come take the boxes and move it to the truck. I want to make it nice and smooth and easy. Ideally, I do want to move um, within under two hours because I'm just one person. It's not really going to take very long. Another thing I've been doing, which might seem strange, you see the mound over there on the left side? I have been sleeping facing the wall for weeks now. The main reason is I had one night where my nose was just really stuffy. I don't know what the hell was going on, but there's once in a while my nose gets really, really stuffy. I can't breathe. It becomes really difficult to fall asleep. Sometimes it's because my room is dry and I need to have my humidifier on. But anyways, I had the window open. I had my humidifier and it wasn't helping. So I just decided to sleep that way because the window, when the wind comes in, it would come like directly on my face and I thought it would help. And um, since then I've been enjoying sleeping facing the wall, so I'm still doing that. But what I wanted to show you guys, just cause, because I feel like um, a lot of my vlogs have been more about my business, so I wanted to take this time to talk more about everything else that I've been doing or the random little bits that I like to share. This might not seem like much, but these are most of my active wear. I have been enjoying wearing active wear a lot, a lot. And actually, let me show you guys. So I have been wearing some of my logo shirts, but I bought a bunch of tops from the brand Free People. Free People. The uh, line is called Intimately, but basically Free People is a brand that I first heard about ages ago. They are more so bohemian, I think is what the style is called, but their basics are amazing so comfortable great fit i love form-fitting clothing so i have a bunch of their tops like this i'm wearing a blue one right now um a couple more somewhere in here <laughs> they're all like mixed in right but anyways um all of my fashion clothes are now in my suitcase because I never wear that stuff anymore. In fact, after my move, I'm going to really consider whether it's something I want to get rid of because I just don't wear that shit anymore and I don't like having that stuff take up space. Of course, once in a while, if I felt like dressing up, it would be nice to have, but maybe keep a couple pieces. Who knows? But right now, there's no point in having it up, so storing it away, getting ready for the move would be great. Alrighty, so after the accident with Louis happened on Saturday, I decided to kind of think through some of my spending and, you know, trying to figure out if there was ways I could cut back costs because of losing so much money that day. So I decided that instead of staying at a separate house in an Airbnb when I go visit my brother, I would cancel that and stay with him at his apartment instead. Originally, I didn't want that because of my independence and also because he lives in an apartment, small-ish. I don't remember what the square foot was. Six, seven hundred? Or was it? I thought it was five hundred. I need to double check with him, but it's not very big. So I didn't want to stay with him because I have Riley, and then there's going to be four fucking cats. So it just felt kind of hectic. Um, but you know what? I was thinking my freaking Airbnb would cost a thousand dollars, so he is nice enough to let me stay. Hopefully it's not gonna be a problem because truthfully, um, when I stay with my brother, it's just not always the most smoothest interaction. And yeah, maybe he's gonna be more of a clean person this time. But um, 
That is actually going to take place next week. I decided to move up my visit because I didn't want his kittens to get that much bigger by the time I visited because my original date was November 8th, which means it would be three weeks after they got home, which means they would be like three months old by then. So instead, I was going to go visit next week on Sunday, actually this upcoming Sunday. And that might be a bit kind of hectic for him because he's arriving home on Saturday with his kittens. So his kittens only get one day to adjust to his home life and then they're going to be bombarded by all of my pets. So I'm a little bit nervous about that truthfully. But the thing is, they are kittens. I can't imagine Sammy and Milo being assholes, but you never know, right? But at least Barla, I know that she'll be respectful. I think I'm probably going to avoid letting her approach them and have them approach her instead because she's big. So <laughs> at first glance, she might look menacing or something like that. Next up, let's discuss reading because I have actually started reading again. So for the longest time, actually at the start of this year, I think I was still in the middle of reading Michelle Obama's book, Becoming. Um, I read like half of it and then I just stopped because reading is an activity that comes and goes for me. So I saw a book a couple months ago by Hilary Burton. She's an actress from One Tree Hill. And I came across interviews of her because I am subscribed to talk show hosts on YouTube. So saw that she was talking about a book and her book was about her moving from California to a small town called Rhinebeck in New York and her farm and her country life and since that is the type of life that I find very appealing I wanted to read about it from her perspective so that encouraged me to finish Michelle Obama's book which then I read Hillary's book fairly quickly and then after that I was like yeah I'm enjoying reading again so um, let's keep going with this my last book was May Musk's book Elon Musk's mother and that book was really bad um, it was written in the most basic, simplistic way and I felt like I was kind of reading a children's book. I just really didn't like it. It was also a very fast read because of how easy it was. So knocked that one out right away. And now I am reading a book called The Lying Life of Adults by Elena Ferrante. This is what the uh, cover looks like. I am about... Let's see, 50% into the book. I don't know what I feel about this book, honestly. I think that the latter half or towards the end, how this book ends might determine how I feel about the book because right now I feel confused or indifferent. Um, I don't know if I like the main character. I don't know if I like any character as a matter of fact, so it's hard to say. I wouldn't say that I'm not enjoying the book, but how I feel about it, I just can't figure out yet. So um, since I have been spending at least some time every single day reading, and because when I go to my brother's house, I foresee myself reading a fair amount because I don't have a laptop, I don't have a good way, I guess, to keep myself entertained during the downtime when I'm staying there, so I'm gonna have to figure that out. Um, of course, I'll bring my work laptop, but that laptop sucks ass because I can't do anything on it outside of work. I can't plug in something external and watch videos or use it like a regular laptop. So it's literally just work laptop. I could bring Shane's laptop that he has let me use for a while, but it's a fairly slow laptop. I would say browsing is probably better on my work laptop than that one. But if I wanted to watch anything, I would have to use that one. And something to consider is I would need headphones for that because I don't want to play through speakers. Yeah, it's just fucking complicated actually. So I don't know. Reading might be the one thing that I might end up doing a lot. So I decided to order my next book already. And I normally have trouble with figuring out what I want to read, but I found Melinda Gates's book and she has always struck me as someone that's similar to Michelle Obama where I have never seen her in a way that was not to be respected. So reading about what she has to say in her book or her experiences or 
anything like that, I feel like that would be interesting for me to read. And I think nowadays I'm intrigued to read books by other women who are really well respected and just smart, intelligent women that maybe I could learn something from their books. So I ordered that, it's gonna to arrive tomorrow and I'll be sure to bring that with me next week. Aside from all that, I think I will try to keep the rest of my week fairly unoccupied for downtime. The thing that I'm surprisingly struggling with is after a board is done, when the dog leaves, I am antsy because I want my next board. But I don't know why I feel that way because when I have a board, I'm like, I want my freedom back. So it's always the exact opposite of what I have at the moment. So. When it comes to balancing all of this, I've realized that I need to just learn to appreciate my downtime again because I love it. Right now, it's about five o'clock p.m. and I can do whatever the hell I want for the next six, seven hours. Feels amazing, I can do anything. <laughs> Nothing is gonna bother me, Nothing's gonna stress me out. But yeah, when I say I wanna keep the rest of my week fairly open, I just don't wanna cram it up too much. So right now it actually feels kinda cramped but maybe that's just because of how I perceive scheduling. So Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, I have one lesson on each of those days, but they're only an hour. And actually I've noticed when I go to lessons, I tend to enjoy it. So I think I'm just that type of person who has been by myself, scheduling things by myself for so long that when I have even just one appointment on any day, it makes me feel a little anxious leading up to it because I don't have free will in terms of like what I can choose to do with my time, if that makes any sense. I don't know if that makes any sense, but I think that's usually why I feel the way I do, where I'm like, oh, I, I have to go to lessons. It feels like an obligation, but obviously it's not, right? But um, tomorrow is my final lesson with this girl who has a leash reactive German Shepherd. I haven't seen her in a week and a half because I didn't want to schedule a lesson while Louie was here. So we scheduled it way out um, and it's finally happening tomorrow. So I'm going to see what her progress has been like. She seems like she, at least during my last lesson, that she had pretty good understanding of how to use the e-collar with her dog. Um, and tomorrow my landlord wants to show the house around again during my lesson, so I have to take Riley with me. And I did tell her, you know, I'm gonna have my dog with me so we can practice me walking by with my dog and we'll see how you can handle your dog's reactivity. Um, so what I was thinking is we would start on opposite ends of the street and then I would walk Riley by and gradually, gradually close the distance if her dog is doing well. So we'll see how that goes. On Thursday, I have a lesson with a guy with a pit bull who wants to work on his walk as well, loose leash walk. He, I don't know if he has ever tried to walk in a heel with his pit bull, but he reached out to me randomly. Um, he was someone who had one lesson with me weeks ago, a while ago now, and uh, reached back out out of the blue. So that's always nice, repeat client. And then on Friday, oh yes, on Friday I have a woman with a deaf dog who she wants me to work on recall and heal with her dog um, using e-collar. And I believe this will be the first time that she's using e-collar with her dog. So that will be really cool because I've never worked with a deaf dog before. And um, e-collar would be perfect for that because um, yeah, they can't hear you from a distance. From a distance, hand signals might be hard to see unless you're going like this. I don't know if that would be an ideal recall hand signal anyways. I don't know much about training deaf dogs, but training a deaf dog on e-collar would be very, very similar in terms of how the e-collar is used. The only difference is they won't hear your verbal reinforcement, positive reinforcement, like good, no, whatever. Three days in a row of lessons but that means I get content for three days, which I always enjoy putting up videos. It's just, I like to increase my library of dog training content. Otherwise, I have to come up with some ideas on my own of what I would like to talk about or discuss 
um, if I don't have client footage to use. So if anyone wants to give me some ideas as people that aren't me, because um, whenever I hear other people's advice or suggestions about what they find interesting about dog training, I love to hear it because what I find interesting or fascinating is not what the general public tends to think because I'm too hardcore and I like off-leash freedom, but most people just want basic stuff like not having their dog pull them on a walk. So um, if anyone has ideas that they want to just throw at me, please, anything that you think might be interesting for me to create a video on, let me know your ideas so I could just have more options. That would really help me a lot, all right? All right, I'll see you guys later.